today's episode, we are going to talk about collars. And collars are something that people have a lot of interest in when it comes to DOM subdynamics, because it's one of the, the few ways that people can really identify a DOM subdynamic from the outside, but also because of what it means inside the dynamic. So for today's conversation, I want to start out just talking a little bit about why I have you wear a collar. At the beginning of this dynamic, a collar was something that was really important to me. It was something that was one of the, the few things that I laid out for you at the beginning of this that was important to me and that I wanted to have as a part of this from the start. And when you agreed to go ahead and go into this with me, that was the first thing we did as we sat down and picked out a collar off of Eternity Collars website, which is the one that you're wearing right now. Minus this piece. Right. Yeah, we added the O-ring a couple of years later, but it was important to me from the beginning. And before I, I'll share my side of like why that was important to me, but I'd like you to go first and share what was it, or what was it like for you at the beginning to put on a collar? Hmm. So it just felt natural, partly because you asked for it and told me why and what it meant to you. And it felt good to receive that. And, um, This was a dynamic added to our already great marriage. Despite it is even better now, <laughs> but it still felt great when we started this. And so for me, it was like my wedding ring, but signifying this piece. And in my mind, it I really didn't go beyond what it meant to me and you. I don't recall thinking like about that very much, but also I didn't have a lot of knowledge in the BDSM, Dom Sub. Um, this won't be the last time I say this. I mean, my my knowledge, if you will, if you can even call this knowledge, was Fifty Shades of Grey. And he specifically says in the book that he doesn't do collars. And reading that book way back then, that didn't mean anything to me <laughs> about that aspect of it even. So, I mean, it was really for me, you you asked for it and I wanted to honor it. And that's, that's what felt good to me. And so when December 2nd of 2018, when I put that collar on you mm -hmm. and you s have worn it every single day since then, that one, yes. or there are a couple others. We'll talk about that a little bit later, other collars that you have, but what was it like at the beginning? for you walking around in public wearing that eternity collar? Normal. It, I, di I didn't really think much of it. And this one is very lightweight. And so I don't notice um, the feel of it. It didn't like feel like a hard thing to adjust to. And I really didn't think about what other people were thinking about it. Yeah, because it didn't mean anything to you beyond what it meant to us. Right. I didn't have any, let's say it this way, negative connotation. Um, or sexual I, connotation. Or sexual connotation around it. Um, 
at all. And so therefore I didn't bring, it didn't bring up shame for that I know some people attached to the collar. It didn't bring that up in me. And I'm very happy about that. <laughs> I've had plenty of other shame to deal with. <laughs> Do you remember any of the the first inklings that you got that wearing a collar was diff like meant something different to other people than it did to you? Great question. Yes, over time. But for whatever reason, it really it never has bothered me knowing that someone else might see it and think wow she's kinky or wow she's into bdsm or wow she's a submissive like what the heck that didn't bother me it still doesn't bother me never has and i can't really answer why it just doesn't it actually like now i'm like yeah, I, <laughs> I wish you could tell me what you're thinking. <laughs> but it, it actually is way more playful and fun when it gets noticed. Yeah, you just you never had the fear of it getting noticed. And that's something I know we hear from people is fear around wearing a collar in public. And it's really fun when we have people come to us like through Instagram and send us a message like, you inspired me to wear my collar out in public for the first time I with my those. husband. Yeah, those are great. Um, cause it's, it's fun because it is a sign of the devotion that can be present in this kind of relationship and that this kind of dynamic can bring out in a couple. So it's fun to hear when other people have that experience. So like, I remember the first couple times it getting noticed. Like we were at a motorcycle show in Denver. Yep. And we walked in and a couple of the girls working at the door, like, hey, nice collar. I think that wasn't my typical one though. No, I think you had a little bit more obvious. Yeah, yeah. One on at that point. The one that you wear now is a little bit more quite obvious where just the Eternity collar by itself is just basically a silver ring around your neck that Well, let's Come back to that because For me at the beginning of asking you to be my submissive one of like I said one of the things that was important to me from the start was to have you wear a collar and a part of it was I just wanted to see it I wanted the daily constant reminder of what this dynamic was. I also thought it was sexy to have that on display and to have it be one of the fun little things, even if nobody else notices that it's something between you and me mm -hmm. that we know. But especially for me, it was the, the symbol of commitment to this dynamic. And it really is a symbol of two-way commitment. And I like what the eternity style collar represents. Like it's a solid ring. It's attached around your neck with an Allen wrench. It just doesn't come on and off. And you know, it's something that I gave to you and that you wear but it really is for both of us because it's a symbol for, to me, it's a symbol for you or of your submission to me, but it's also a symbol of my responsibility for you. Right. And I felt that from the very beginning, but in such a small, um, comparison to what it is now after working through all of the emotional barriers that stood in the way of this deeper aspect but also deepening into the spiritual aspect of it and now like 
the amount of pride that I feel in wearing it is so much bigger, so much more authentic. Like I have full ownership in it after getting rid of some of, you know, the people pleasing, doing it for you because you asked, working through reading all of that emotional garbage um, and really just feeling, like I said, the deeper spiritual aspect of this. I mean, the love and devotion that has, that is present in every day, every moment of our lives I really don't have a way to describe that, but that's what I feel in wearing it, no matter which collar I have on. They're all the same meaning. So we were in this dynamic for two and a half or so years before we started Infinite Devotion. Yes. Or before we started our Instagram account, which then became Infinite Devotion. Right. And the story we've told on Instagram before, but I want to <laughs> tell it here for the sake of the podcast listeners. We, like, your collar was a big part of what launched this whole business for us. And, like, why we're doing what we're doing here today was, you know, we were out having a couple glasses of wine. And we took, you took a selfie of us. Actually, I think you gave me the camera to take a selfie. This would I don't have been take like, selfies. <laughs> well, I, I have much longer arms than you do. So you right. always, the person with the longest arms always takes the selfie. That's just the rule. Yeah, because I usually cut off my face. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we took a selfie and then... And I want to say I was wearing the red lace collar. Yes. Which you can find on the Instagram account. There's plenty of pictures of it. Yep. But it was very prominent in yep. the collar. Yep. So at that point, we had started this Instagram account, which wasn't called Infinite Devotion at the time. It was more just one for the two of us to share some of our lives. Right. And you posted that picture of the two of us and included hashtag what colored girl hashtag collared girl and we unleashed a beast <laughs> that was the beginning yeah like, of um people finding us because of that mm -hmm. yeah because that picture we had several different people find it because they were following or searching for that hashtag on Instagram. Right. And then they found it, started going through other pictures where things like, it was things like us traveling, working out, living life. And they saw like, she's wearing a collar in all of these pictures. Yep. And the first, the first couple that reached out to us was a husband and a wife who had been in a dominant submissive dynamic for quite a while together, but were quite ashamed of it and embarrassed by it. And, and like, seemed that way because she, her response when she found your pictures was she's so brave. Which, and I remember hearing that I'm like, okay. <laughs> I didn't really think that much of it. Right. Well, because you didn't have the connotations to what a collar meant. And, and some people do really associate it with kink and with yep. some pretty in, like intense BDSM style sexuality. And they have those things linked. Yeah. So, you know, we had quite a few conversations with that couple about wearing your collar in public and what this relationship meant to us and what it meant to them. And then several other people reached out to us too. And that's when we kind of started to shift what we were doing and share more of this dumb sub dynamic. 
but it like it was your sassy couple of glasses of wine <laughs> um, energy in posting that picture that really got this whole thing started. So thank you. My pleasure. You're fun when you get sassy and have a couple of glasses of wine. I don't call that sassy. I just, <laughs> I was just having fun. So <clears throat> you talked about how now you wear that collar with a lot of pride. Right. What does it feel like to you now? Because at the beginning, it was kind of a piece of jewelry to like to you and in the way that other people saw it. What is it like to you today wearing my collar out in public and if you're noticed? I would say, I'm trying to think of how to really articulate this. It's just, it's a part of me. And it feels good to wear it. And to be honest, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about it. Right. I, I don't know what anybody else is thinking about it. If they want to judge me, it's the judgment is all about their life experience. They're seeing it through whatever lens a collar would mean. And I know that about interactions with other people. And so I don't think about it in response to like meeting someone new. It's, it's just a part of who I am now. And I, what has deepened in me, like I kind of referenced was, is, um, the ownership of it because it's felt at such a soul level for me. It's a spiritual thing. And I don't, I don't think about it. I feel it. And so it's a felt part of my every day is how I would describe that now. And if, you know, there was a time early on where I did get questions about it. It was like, it, it might be someone not, not frequently, I would say, but randomly it was like at the gym. Oh, is that for balance? And then I, you know, was a personal trainer and people would see me work out or work with it. I always wore it. And so eventually some people were curious and then I'd get a question like, what is this? And in the beginning, um, I didn't really want to open up conversation about it. And so I remember one time saying it's a necklace. But I also have always read the, I would say the audience and the tone of the question. Mm -hmm. I have no problem talking about it. But if I feel some sort of judgment, I'm not going to go into a big conversation about it, even if I say, yeah, it's a collar. And so I've, I've said that to people and I've gotten like a dumbfounded look. <laughs> <laughs> And I've said it to another woman at the gym and she wanted to talk about it. And we, this was in the middle of my workout. And I think we ended up talking for 20 to 30 minutes all about what dominance and submission is and how she saw it and was asking a lot of questions. And so, um, yeah, to sum all of that up, I would say it's a felt it's, it's feeling the love and devotion when I look in the mirror, when I feel it, if it bounces on my chest because I'm jumping rope or running or something like that, that's what it is to me. Love and devotion of who and what you are to me. One of the things that's made me really proud of you as you've grown and 
taken more and more ownership of what submission is to you. Because at the beginning, you didn't know what you were getting into all the way. You were kind of, you were following me (laughs) down a path that you trusted me to lead you down. Right. And so at the, at the beginning, you didn't know what authentic submission even meant. No clue. And yeah, one of the things I'm really proud of you for is how your ownership of this for yourself has displayed itself in the way that you communicate with people about what it means to you to be a submissive and what it, what this sort of relationship dynamic means, but what it also has provided for you and what it's, what it's done to change your life. Thank you. So when I get to witness you, which doesn't happen all that often, but when I've gotten to witness you sharing with other people about your collar and what it means, it really has um, been a, a source of a lot of pride in you and I have a lot of gratitude for your willingness to express that rather than hide from it. Thank you. And I, what I would add to that is my confidence in it and pride in it has um, only come because of the ownership of the of connecting with this deeper felt sense of needing submission and to follow you and being willing to walk through all the fires that that meant for me and us together and through time and experience um, I am now able to articulate it and again the felt sense not just not from my mind it's from the felt sense as best as I can because that's hard to describe of truly what this is and it it has come from surrender yes but it's surrendering to my soul's purpose it's surrendering to the truth that you see in me and allowing that to come forth and letting the judgment go the shame burn away because I seek authenticity. So let's answer a couple of the most common questions that we get from people about wearing a collar. Sure. How often does it get noticed? Like where people actually say something to you? Well, not that often, I would say. Um, it's always fun when it is actually, no matter like how it's received, um, but not that often. Now that being said, I don't have a job that I go to and that I'm around a ton of people. So obviously there's a rule of numbers there, but yeah, not that frequently. One of the things that's really interesting and that's been really interesting is most of the time that you've been asked about your collar, it's almost exclusively been by women. Um, Or mostly by women. Yeah, I can think of three times by a man. But almost never when I'm present. Right. And one of the times that I was present, (laughs) the person asking you, we were at the gym together and we were just close by each other. I was stretching. You were standing within 10 feet of me. And I had spoken to this man several times at the gym. Right. Already. Yeah. For, For any of our listeners who don't know this or just maybe getting to know us through this podcast, Don is a very friendly person. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and she loves to talk to people. I do. So in this particular case, this guy asked you about it and I only got to witness it because I just so happened to be 10 feet away from you sitting on the floor stretching. Right. And he asked you about it and basically what is this? Mm -hmm. And I said it's a color. Yeah. And he went, uh, 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 okay, well, I got to go. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> he was on his way out anyway, but yeah, yeah, he seemed a little dumbfounded. Yeah, so that was entertaining. But I haven't gotten to witness you being asked about it that much because, well, I guess I'm not sure why. It's It's interesting that it doesn't get brought up in my presence all that much but we you know, we run this business together from home and when we travel we go a lot of places together we do a lot of things together so you you might hear more about it or be asked more about it if you were like if we lived lives where we were separate more often than we are we spend a lot of time together right well also though think I, I put myself in someone else's shoes like think about going up to someone and a stranger and asking them a question about something they're wearing mm -hmm. like it's not that common right I might compliment something on a stranger oh I love your shirt or I love your jewelry or like I love your hair your shoes whatever but I'm not gonna be like looking at you like what what is that? Now, granted, for those who do that, great. Yeah. There is a bravery in that, to be honest. But then also, if someone else who sees it on me associates it with kink, is shameful about it, whatever, maybe it means sex to them, and they're not comfortable with that in themselves, they're probably not going to ask me about it. Right. You know? Well, and that... You know, that's maybe a point that I didn't make well before, but the caller to us really is not about sex. It's not about kink. It's about devotion. It's a symbol, like you said, like your wedding ring is a symbol of our marriage. The caller is a symbol of our devotion to each other in this relationship. And so to somebody who has the kink association with it, they're going to have a very different view of it and maybe of you, but that's something I've watched you really lean into getting a kick out of like the fact that some people are going to think whatever they think. And it's kind of fun. Yeah. And all mo most people I won't know. Right. You know, it was just last weekend we were walking down a sidewalk and you didn't notice it, but I did someone sitting at a cafe on the sidewalk Oh yeah. Like I was watching him because he was looking at you and his jaw was about down on the table <laughs> and as he was looking at you but not at your face <laughs> but also not at your chest somewhere in between there <laughs> and kind of had this dumbfounded look on his face like he couldn't believe <laughs> what he was seeing. So th those kinds of things are fun. Like we we laugh about them, we chuckle about them and and go on with our day. But then, you know, also just on a walk yesterday, um, a woman who we were just crossing, like walk, we were going one direction, she was going the other direction. And she looks at you, taps her own chest where your collar is and says like mouths, not out loud. Um, this is beautiful. And so that's another part of it too. Like we don't know what someone like that is perceiving when they see it. No. She might've just thought, wow, that is a really unique piece of jewelry. Or right. she might've known exactly what it was and was complimenting it. Yeah. And, and again, like all of that, even the compliments mm -hmm. are about them and I can receive any of that. Right. And so, 
I wear it for me, I wear it for us. And that truly is, has, is and how it's always been for me. So a couple of the other questions we've gotten. Is it heavy? This one is not. It's titanium. And I, I don't know what the weight is of it, but it's amazing. I love it. So you have worn it doing a lot of different active things. Yep, jump rope, to hang cleans, to burpees, to running. Um, on a spin bike. On a spin bike, yep. You, you said it would bounce around on your collarbones quite a bit. Yeah, and, and that doesn't hurt either. Another question we've gotten quite a few times, um, I guess these two go together, being out in the sun, does it get hot? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Um, it does a little bit, but like I don't feel that. So like I might feel it if I touch it. I have gotten a little bit of tan line That's from the it. other one. Yep. And so I do try to move it around a little bit if I just happen to be laying in the sun and it's, I can do that. Otherwise, it's just there. And whatever. <laughs> if I get a little tan line, I get a little tan line. Yeah. We spend a lot of time in the sun in the summertime and you usually do end up with a pretty good collar tan line. Yeah. And the only time that matters is when I wear a different collar that's more a choker. Mm -hmm. That... Um, then you might see that, but I it doesn't bother me. So another question that we get is, does it ever come off? Or can you take it off? No. Um, the only times it has come off were when I used to get um, regular massages. Um, it was helpful to have it off for that. And so I would take it off before and put it back on. I would have to do that because you weren't there with me. Other than that, all of the on off has been through our little ritual um, of kneeling in front of you and having you do it um, for the purpose of putting on a different collar. And then that, ma that makes me think about early on, we would, if we were flying, we did oh. take it off <laughs> in the airport thinking it was going to be a problem with insecurity mm -hmm. and then one time we didn't and noticed it's it the titanium one isn't a problem that's actually a fun a fun story because this happened a handful of times before we started leaving it on going through security mm -hmm. i would take the collar off of you when we got to the airport right and then we would go through TSA. Yep. Go through the checkpoint. And then we would find a little spot, you know, not right in the middle of the busy, like, area. We'd find, like, an empty gate that wasn't being used. And find a little spot off to our, off by ourselves. And I would have you kneel down in front of me. And I would put it back on you. And that in itself, that little ritual, the fact that it's normally done in private, like it's just you and me, but the fact that it, that we are both, I guess, one, comfortable enough with what this relationship is and with not caring what other people think. but too committed to that ritual enough that even right in the middle of an airport that you get down on your knees in front of me, hold your hair back while I put it back on you. But yeah, the airport security question is another one that we've gotten a couple times. And since we started leaving it on you, it's never come up. You walk through and they look at it like a necklace. Yeah. So, I gave you that collar. We picked it out together. Yep. 
and we've had a couple of them. One of the reasons Don has a very small neck and Eternity Collars, where we got that one from, came out with, after we bought the first one, they came out with a, an even smaller size that fit even better. Yeah. And besides that collar, we I also have several other collars that I will put on you from time to time. Yeah, there's got to be like five or six without counting. Yeah. Yeah, and you can, like, there are pictures with all of them on our Instagram account that people can look at, but we have one very pretty one. Actually, we we met someone who had seen our Instagram account, and we met them in person, and they had the conversation <laughs> before we went to dinner to meet this couple. Like, I wonder what collar she's going to wear. I hope she wears the red lace one. <laughs> and I had put the red lace one on you. Yep. Um, so there's a, a really pretty, delicate red lace overlay on top of a leather collar with a large O-ring on it. Yep. A black leather collar. There's several black leather ones. Yeah. A wide posture collar. And then a black and red leather. Yep. Some of these, the Eternity Collar, like I talked about, it has a set screw, right? It's a little Allen wrench and that's basically screwed in place on your neck. Mm -hmm. And most of the other ones are attached with a padlock. Yep. So there are so many options out there and so many really like artistic creators of these things some people choose day collars that are literally just a necklace well and that, that's the beautiful thing around the collars because what's important is the meaning to you right. like to you and your partner. And so if you want your collar to be a bracelet, if you want it to be a ring, if you want it to be just a regular necklace, it's the meaning that's behind it. It doesn't have to look any certain way. It could be a earrings, like by all means, it could be a tattoo for people who are in tattoos, into tattoos, you know? And so- You read a book one time where when a woman was collared, she got a neck, like a collar tattoo on her neck. Yeah. I personally wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the idea. I just, I don't want to deal with all of that pain. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and only have that one. And I love, I love having numerous collars and that wasn't anything we talked about right at the beginning but I love jewelry and that was the hard part of like having all this jewelry that I loved and then not wearing it anymore and so I love having the variety I love adding to it that's been a fun part of our journey too mm -hmm. and you know changing it up with outfits like certain things look good with other things and so or other collars and so I think that's really fun because you do always choose what color I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. That is an agreement that we have. And so, you know, talking about the outfit, if we're going out and sometimes you choose that and cause you, or the outfits chosen because you have a specific color that I'm going to wear. And so to me, that's just fun. And yeah, it keeps, yeah, I don't know how else to say it. It just keeps it fun. Right. And you do wear all of the collars that we have for you in public. Yes. Including yep. the posture collar. Yes. One of the things that a lot of people are afraid of when it comes to wearing a collar is judgment. 
Yep. Have you had experiences where people were judgmental to you? And if so, how did you handle those? Let me think for a moment. Um, I think I can only think of one comment in all the years that could be, could have been judgmental. Um, I would, in my opinion, it, it was judgmental, but I just played it off. Um, <clears throat> it was more like a question. And I don't really know if that person knew what it was. And it didn't bother me at all because, again, if someone wants to judge me for something, they're making an assumption about me and it, their judgment is all about them. Whatever they're associating this caller to mean is only about them. And it doesn't bother me. So to close out, I want to take a, a minute here to just maybe share a couple of stories. Um, a couple of the, the fun stories about your caller being noticed. And if you have one that comes to mind, um, I do remember quite a few years ago, we were out on the boat and we met these other two couples and we hung out with them like back to back days. And I think it was like the end of the second day, the two women finally got up the courage to ask me like, what is this? And they were pointing to their neck and one of them or I think they both maybe had the assumption. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of just a fun conversation about what is that to you? And, you know, yeah. they, they knew what it was, but they weren't just going to straight out call you out on it. So they kind of asked the, asked the question and yeah. let you invite the conversation. Yeah. And I was totally fine to talk about it. I guess one of the, the funniest story, I, I think if, if I'm remembering all of them is being out um, listening to live music at a bar and um, I had a more prominent collar on yeah black, black leather, leather collar with a, with a big silver o-ring yep yeah and I'll let you share because you probably remember it very well yeah well we were there with with a friend who knew like knew about this dynamic and so the three of us were there and it was towards the end of the night when like we were getting ready to go home and it was loud, like music was loud, lots of people. And lady came up to Dawn and says, like she taps her own neck and she said, I know what that is and I want it. <laughs> yep. With you right by my side. Right. And we both kind of looked at her and then she said, can I have it? Like she, she literally asked you if she, like if she was asking you to take off your collar and give it to her because she wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> and she continued with, I'm sure, lots of liquid courage to make the point that she knew what that meant. She knew what it was and that she wanted you to give it to her. And she was adamant that she wanted you to give her your collar yep and finally i had to step in and say if you knew if you know exactly what that is you know why we won't be taking it off and giving it to you no you said why you can't have it why you can't have it yep. yes that's what you said if you know what it is you know why you can't have it <laughs> i remember that specifically yeah yeah, she was um, like several sheets to the wind at the time, but it maybe, was maybe maybe not. But that that was one of that was one of the funniest ones for sure. <clears throat> Any other ones come to mind for you? Um, do 
just I've gotten a lot of compliments on the variety ones. Most compliments have been on the red lace collar. It stands out and I've gotten compliments by men and women on that one. Yeah, it's very unique. It's very pretty. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, we that one got pointed out five or six times in one afternoon <laughs> a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. We it's were very in a beautiful. setting where people would know. So, yeah, the, I guess the, the biggest thing that I share with people that are asking questions about collars in general is most people don't have any clue and they aren't really paying that much attention to it. Most people are so tied up in their own lives that they don't even notice it. And it really is all the, all this conversation and all these stories that we've told, like this is over five, almost five years. It's really, right. it's pretty infrequent that it actually comes up out in public. And honestly, like if I would ever get someone asking me a question and pushing for information that I wasn't willing to share, I don't have to share anything ever and I can always walk away from somebody you know so yeah so I guess I'll sum sum it up and kind of wrap it up with a statement that you made when you wrote a post on our blog now a couple of years ago you said wear your collar and wear it proudly so almost five years into this dynamic in five years of wearing a collar. It is really an integral part of this, of this relationship and of this dynamic between you and I, and it, it'll continue to be. And, you know, over the next five years, it'll be fun to see how that evolves and how the, the meaning of it gets deeper. And also to keep exploring different options and different collars and people can stay tuned on our Instagram and I'm sure they'll get to see any and all of the new options that we pick out. Yes, I love looking for new fun ones and new colors to add and new ways that we can add to my wardrobe your or add, add collars to fit my wardrobe your collar wardrobe yeah so if anyone listening to this or watching this on YouTube has any favorites or places that they like to look at collars please feel free to send them to us we'd love to find new options and alternatives Thank you for this conversation today. My pleasure. <laughs>